majority of the world's GDP will be produced by machines. Welcome to the Think India series of audio and video podcasts by Brand Capital International. This is the place where you're going to see top insiders, entrepreneurs and innovators who are going to come and share with us their secrets on how to build a company ground up and take it global. All coming from the hub of innovation, the Silicon Valley. Hello, welcome to the Think India series by Brand Capital and welcome Sabir. When I say Think India, what are the first things that come to your mind, Sabir? Challenging place, obviously. Great opportunity uh, because of its large size of its population. Majority of the people are below the age of 40. But a country that uh, also lacks infrastructure. You can't do the same things in India that you can do in other countries in the West. Uh, India has its own set of challenges uh, because... You know, it's a democracy. There's a lot of freedom that also brings with it the challenges of being a democracy. Uh, things move very slowly. But on the whole, you know, great opportunity, but not for the faint of heart. Several years ago, you helped everybody innovate. You innovated and you helped people to communicate through email uh, with the uh, creation of Hotmail.com. What's the new thing which you're reimagining right now? I can't talk too much about it because we're still in stealth mode. The general idea is that we are headed into an autonomous future where we believe that the majority of the world's GDP by 2030 will be produced by machines. Today, the majority of the world's GDP is produced by humans assisted by machines. And that means we're headed into an autonomous future where you know, machines will run everything, whether it is driving cars, airplanes, doing manufacturing for us. We believe a large section of buildings in the world will also run themselves autonomously. So we have built a platform that enables buildings to run autonomously. Our goal is to bring commercial real estate and transform it into the modern era. How do you see that space affecting the half a billion people how do you bring all of them on board and move them into the 21st century? Today, we have humans who identify things either visually or by smell or are told things. That information is going to be communicated to the relevant stakeholder without any loss of information or loss of time. How is it going to transform half a billion? I think it's going to transform people the world over, not just the half a billion people, because it's just going to make life more efficient, safer. That's the new promise of what IoT is. So we let me talk a little bit about uh, education, and particularly in India. Obviously, we all agree that the education system which needs to be changed, I mean, as a visionary, what is your take on how do you reimagine the entire educational system in India? I think education in general has to be more relevant to the times, which means you study things that are more current and are taught things that are more current and with which you can go and you know, join the workforce more quickly. And, you know, for example, I had to teach myself all of last year what new form of artificial intelligence was, what are the new techniques, but the beauty of the whole thing is that today you've got all the tools and the teachers available to you on the internet and teach yourself. But that doesn't mean that you can do away with education or formal education. Giving my own example, I had to learn this new form of AI, but luckily I had a great grounding in you know, linear algebra, which is what all of this new form of AI is based on, uh, which I learned in engineering school. If I hadn't had that, background, I would not have been able to, you know, pick right. this up on my own. All right. Let's get to this buzzword, blockchain. Blockchain technology, a lot of startups working into it. Uh, a lot of applications, I believe, of the black blockchain technology, etc. What's your view on that technology? Blockchain is no different from a secure database, distributed database. I mean, I think there is a little too much excitement on it. It doesn't do much, really. I mean, it's, it's good. It solves a small problem, that of being able to manipulate a central database, which is not really happening anywhere. So I don't think it's like this 
world changing technology or something that well that's all BS. <laughs> it's it's not as big as everybody makes it out to be not everybody people it's already on the on the decline okay. it just eliminates that factor of not being able to trust somebody it's a good idea i mean but not that it's it's a fundamental technology that's changing life we'll talk about something which in india has been of late come under the lens of the reserve bank of india which is cryptocurrency uh, what are your views on cryptocurrency do you believe india needs to look at it more positively than they have been looking at uh, until now i think it's all junk <laughs> the whole crypto world is junk it's a fad that will die and if it's not already dead in 4 5 years from now interesting interesting so what you're saying is that therefore the curbs that reserve bank of india has put is probably the right way to do it the us has done it too i mean the the moment the first letter the sec sent to all the crypto icos of the world they all just vanished all the sec said is explain to us how this is not a security we think it's all security not a single one was able to stand up to a simple question coming a little bit more on to once again on you know education and uh, all about the nano degree do you believe the nano degree could help the general uh, youth in india yeah that i think is you know it's very specific corporations need very specific skill sets re-educate the workforce make them more relevant be enable them to get some kind of a job in the modern economy so nano degrees are great for example there there will be a huge shortage of people in artificial intelligence and uh, related kind of machine learning if there are good people who've you know already got a good grounding in mathematics they can just take a nano degree mm-hmm. spend a few months learning all the tools learning new programming languages i think it's a great idea and the internet is the best way to distribute this so before we conclude i have a last question for you would you like to share some ideas that you have in your mind which you will be implementing in the coming years to change the world again no no, no. i mean i think uh, i don't believe in just telling the whole world people will see it we are working hard the proof of the pudding is in actually creating it and enabling people to eat it thanks a lot thanks a lot once again and thank you for being on this think india series event you're very welcome appreciate it